uh, place, Lord God. I ask you that you use me, Lord God, and I will give you all the glory and all the honor, Lord God. In the name of Jesus, amen. Amen. How's everybody feeling tonight? Amen. Amen. I feel blessed too. I give God thanks for giving me the opportunity to come to this place. I'm just going to give you a short testimony of how I ended up here. Um, it was like about two weeks ago. Um, I was in my room praying, and the presence of the Lord just fell upon me that I was weeping. And um, I was just weeping in the presence of God. When the Lord put that feeling in my heart to come here, I wasn't thinking about it. I wasn't thinking about coming here as many places that I've been to, many places that I know, I wasn't even thinking about coming to the uh, Bishop of Mission. But for some reason, that morning, the Lord touched me and put in my heart to come over here. Now, I wasn't going to come. I was in my car, I started driving around, and all of a sudden, when I looked, I was in front of the Bishop of Mission. <laughs> That's why I said God wants to stay his way. <laughs> When I, when I stopped, I looked, I said, wow. I said, all right, obedience to you, Lord. I went inside. When I went inside, I seen Drew, and there was another gentleman with him there. And um, I started speaking to him. And I said, I need to speak to uh, what is in charge here. And I gave him a little short testimony of my life. And Drew and the brother that was with him looked at me, and they was like, you know what? We were just speaking about that the other day, or yesterday. So um, I was able to speak to the pastor. The pastor came out, Pastor Mike. I went into his office. We sat down, and I started speaking to the pastor on what I felt in my heart. And one thing that the pastor told me, he was like, Brother Frank, you were sitting here by God. Thank See, God. sometimes we don't want to do things. But it's not what we want to do, it's what the Lord wants us to do, because only the Lord knows what we need. Right. Only the Lord knows the things that we are going through. We might be going through a lot of things that people don't see inside. They don't know the pain that we're feeling, but God does, because God knows all things. You can't hide from the Lord. Now, I'm going to jump into a testimony in my life. And I am Brother Bruce, right? Yes. Bruce? Brother Bruce, that says something. That I have in this paper, uh, uh, some notes that I took that I was preparing, but of course everything is subject to change according to the Holy Spirit. Because I'm not the one that's in charge, it's the Holy Spirit that's in charge. Because I'm not the one that speaks, it's the Holy Spirit that speaks through me. And one thing that he said was, he said, seek his kingdom and his righteousness. And everything else will fall in place. Okay? Now, what... That means is that we have to seek the Lord first. Mm -hmm. And everything else is going to fall in place. Your marriage, mm -hmm. your financial uh, problems that you might be going through, your health. Because, see, I'm a person that was raised out in the streets. At the age of 11, I was already living in basements. Mm -hmm. Okay? I ran away from my home because my father raised me to the age of 10. At the age of 10, my father brought me to my mother's house. And my father said, I'll be back to come get you. But my father never came back to come get me. And the thing about it that I got rebellious because my mother always said something to me that I looked like my dad. So because of my mother being upset with my dad, she took it out on me. But see, the things that I didn't understand then, I understand it now, that it wasn't my mother. It was the devil that was trying to destroy me in an early age. Yeah. Because, yeah. see, he sees something. When, when, when God allows him to see certain things, because, see, the devil can't walk into the future. Only the Lord can. Now he can be in your past and in your present. Because he tried to he tried to use your, your past to destroy your future. Amen. 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 Come on, somebody. Amen. somebody. Amen. Now, what happened was that I came to live with my mother. Now, at the age of 10, it's my first time I met my moms. I had brothers and sisters. But of course I was the black sheep because I looked like my dad. And I got beat by my moms. I got hit with ascension cords, marked on my body. Mm. Things that she did that I know it wasn't her because, because of the breakup between her and my father, she started to Jesus. drink. So the devil used that. So and then I decided to run away. Not because I got thrown out. It's because I didn't want to be there because I felt unloved. I felt rejected. I was trying to please my mom, but everything that I did, I couldn't please her. I said, you know what? I'm going to leave. I ran away. 
I had no sleeping in basements. Being on my own at the age of 11. My daughter, stand up tight, man, is 10 years old. She's going to be 11 next, next uh, year, God willingly. At that age, I was already in the streets. At that age, I was sleeping in the basement, not worrying if I was, somebody was going to kidnap me, somebody was going to kill me, whatever. I, was just, I just wanted to get away from home. And at that age, I started stealing, using drugs, smoking, drinking, in and out in, of jail. I've been in every jail in the state of New Jersey, in the institute, starting from Skillman all the way to Yardville, Bordentown, Annandale. I've been in every institution that you can name in the state of New Jersey. And I, what happened was that I started building hate with inside me. Now, what I was doing was since I was mad and upset at my mother, I started being mad and upset at the women that I was choosing. So I started taking it out on them because of the way that my mother treated me. But I thank God because the woman that I chose wasn't the one that was for me. Because the one that was for me, God already had it right there. Amen. See, because we try to choose things in our life that we think is for us, but it's not for us. Because God knows what we need. See, some people get that confused where they be like, I want. God never said in his word, he's going to give you what you want. He's going to give you what you need. Right. Because God is not going to allow something to come. He's not going to give you something that's going to take you away from him. He's going to give you something that's going to bring you close to him. Yeah. Yeah. And the thought that was, I just started building hate. I became a drug dealer. A big time drug dealer. <laughs> Upstate New York. So everything that you can name. And of course, the devil's going to put these thoughts in your mind. You got women, you got the jewelry, you got the fancy cars, you go to the club, he gives you. But doesn't tell you what he's trying to take. And what he's trying to take is your soul. Okay, because it's a battle for you right now. See, the devil's not happy right now. But I know who I serve. I serve a mighty God. That my God, and that he wants to war. And he's able to remove mountains. Mm -hmm. And he's bigger than the problem that you might face or that you might be facing right now. Amen. So I became a big time drug dealer. And guess what? I started using the drug. Mm -hmm. I started using cocaine. And I found myself, right now, I'm just going to take a little this and a little that. But guess what? I became a user. And I started using the same thing that I was selling. The same thing that I was destroying other people with. That I didn't know at, at, at that time. And what happened was one day, I still was selling drugs. But when I was selling the drugs, it was like I was using it. But since I had so much of it, I didn't consider myself being a drug addict. <laughs> one day, there's guys across the street. I, have, I was in the city of Rochester, New York. And I have so many spots, what we call hot spots. And I see these three gentlemen across the street, and they was looking at me. One of them come up to me and they said, listen, you can't sell drugs here no more because we're going to sell our drugs. And I said, you know what? I started this. You can't tell me to get out of here. I was this macho man, okay? So, of course, I got shot in my knee with a 380. Just to, to let you see, with all respect, a 380 in my knee. But guess what? The guy went to go shoot me again. They was, they was coming to kill me. Now the guy went to go shoot me again, and a bullet didn't come out. Okay. He pointed the gun away. What you said? The gun jam? Okay. He pointed the gun away, but the bullet came out. Then when he came again, he tried to shoot me. The bullet didn't come out. He pointed the gun away. It came out. Right. Seven times. Seven times he tried to pull the trigger, and seven times it didn't come out. Mm -hmm. But when he pointed the gun away, it came out. Now, uh -huh. God was not only showing me and having mercy on me, yes. but he was also showing yes. him yes. what he could do. Mm -hmm. And then for those that don't believe, and be like, oh, well, the gun got jammed and this and that. Well, guess what? I got something else to tell you. I go to the hospital. You all know that we have a juggler vein on this right side. Mm -hmm. 
and it goes straight down to your leg. Mm -hmm. The doctors to this day can't understand and can't give an explanation. How was it that that bullet went straight from my knee, stopped at the jugular vein, went around the jugular vein, and continued to go? Only God could do that. Because you know what? God can, if somebody shooting, God is controlling the bullet. And the bullet is still larger than my bone. It's there. Now, I still, through all that, didn't come to the Lord. What happened was that somebody came and visited me. Where I was at, where I was living at. <coughs> and it was, at that time, my ex-girlfriend. At that time, it was her cousin, both her cousin, Mel, and Tina, came to me. They came to visit me and they said, listen, would you like to accept Jesus before they was even finished to tell me that I want to accept Jesus Christ? I said, yes. As soon as I said yes, I felt this peace come over me. There was nothing that was able to get me upset, to get me angry, to get me mad. But in that, what happens? The devil is always walking around to see who he could follow. Mm -hmm. And when you are new in the walk of Christ, he comes hard because he don't want that seed to root and grow. Yes. Now, after that, I got well, and I went back to the same thing, selling drugs. But you know, God is never late. He's always on time, and that I can tell you. Just like Brother Bruce said, he's a walking miracle, he's a walking testimony. I am also. But I don't say my testimony. I say the testimony of Christ in my life because I'm no one without Christ. Mm -hmm. right. Now, there was a young man that was always with me, walking around selling drugs with me. He was a backslider. He knew the word and he was always nervous. And I'm like, Joe, why are you so nervous? Why? You? He never answered. I said, listen, you're with me. I got guns. We are affiliated with gang members and everything. Like, And he was like, nah, I'm all right. But see what I don't understand then, I understand it now. <laughs> see, the thing about Joe, God used him in a way because we was in my house one day, we were smoking, and he just got up and started speaking about Christ. <laughs> that goes to show you that God will use a rock to speak to you. Okay? So he just, and I'm looking at him like, what? <laughs> what? What happened was, that that word that was coming out of his mouth. See, because see, he was raised in the gospel, but he backslid. So that word was already implanted in him. But what happened was that the devil came across and made him separate himself from the Lord. So he's speaking to me, and I'm receiving that word. And I sit there, and I said, Joe, keep talking about this Christ. And he just kept talking. Little did he know that he was planting the seed. See, because one plants, one waters, but he gives the increase. Amen. 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 Now, as he's talking to me, I'm listening. We go and we do demolition work. This is for those that doubt. When God is calling you, trust me, one way or another, you're going to come. Mm -hmm. Either the hard way or the easy way. Mm -hmm. And I'll get to that in a few minutes. Mm -hmm. Now, he spoke to me. And we're doing demolition work in the old building. We was finding coins, dollar bills, magazines. But we came to the school and he stopped me. He says, Brother Frank. Well, he didn't call me Brother Frank at that time. He goes, Big C, why you don't read the Bible? Now, here we go again. <laughs> Wait a minute. What's going on? He said, well, I don't know how to read Spanish. I'm Puerto Rican. But I, I didn't know how to speak Spanish. I didn't know how to read it. I didn't know how to write it. But to the glory of God, I graduated last year because the Holy Spirit was the one who helped me because the Holy Spirit was the one that knew every language. Amen. And that was a miracle that he did. Now, when we were speaking, I said, I don't know how to read Spanish. So, all right. So, we continued to walk and start knocking down the walls and a little book fell out about this small. It didn't have nothing on it. You know how the Bible says Holy Bible? That book didn't have nothing on it. So, I'm thinking it's a regular book. I picked it up, I looked at it, I opened it up, oh, the Bible, guess what, it was in English. <laughs> God, it's not a God who can 
okay, that do things just to be doing them. He don't make mistakes. He's a perfect God. He's a mighty God. He's a loving God. He's a merciful God. And if you're here, it's because the Lord allowed you to be here and because he knew that you was going to be here. Because you know what? The same way that I was living out there and the devil was trying to destroy me and my friend Joe, guess what? I'm here now because of God's grace and his mercy. Now, when I open up the Bible and I say, Holy Bible, in this, my friend Joe, you know, his eyes are kind of big. I don't like to call him by and get, you know, make him look funny and like that. And I say that with respect. But his eyes got bigger. <laughs> <laughs> he looked at me. He said, see, God's calling you. Praise God. Hallelujah. But it wasn't that he was just trying to show me. He was also trying to show him because he backslid. And he knew the word. And the reason why he was scared was because he knew that if he would get out there, get killed, that he was going to die without his salvation. That was the fear that Joe had. But see, God used them to speak to me. Because see, God always puts people in your way to speak to you. When you're alone, maybe you might be down walking on the street and all of a sudden you see somebody and be like, listen, Jesus loves you. Give you a shot. Right there, God is speaking to you. Through that person, because that's a vessel that he's using to bring that word. So, I left it at that. I still didn't want to listen. Still didn't want to listen. Then I leave from my chest. I come over here. Thank the Lord. I ran into my wife. I still was going to church though. See, my wife was raised in the gospel. She knows the Lord. Okay? And I'm here standing because the grace and mercy of God and because of her praise. Amen. See, if you're here, okay? Because see, there's people praying for you in your family that you might don't even know that serve Christ. But they're praying. And God sees that. And because they're faithful to the Lord, and they're praying, saying, Lord, I ask you to watch over my family. He's watching over you. Maybe some of you might be like, well, yeah, but I'm in here, I'm in the streets. But guess what? You don't know what, what's out there in that world. The devil's waiting for you to destroy you. So, what happened was, I still didn't listen. I came to meet my wife. She started asking me to go to church. I'm like, now nah, I'll go with you one day. I won't one day with her. <laughs> and the Lord spoke. Because see, when I spoke to her, she like, you know, I know her from a couple of years back. Then I ran into her five years later. What are the coincidences of that? The things of God is not a coincidence. <laughs> when God puts them together, there's no man that can separate that. Right? Amen. So she said, God has told me that you are the one for me. I said, what? <laughs> what are you talking about? She goes, let's pray about it. I said, pray? What is pray? She says, talking to the Lord. She said, come on. Get on your knees. Speak to the Lord. Tell him to tell you something that nobody else knows. To see if I'm the one for you. service on a Tuesday night here in Patterson on Summer and Market. There's a missionary lady there. And she's preaching. I walk in, I sit down. So I sit down. <clears throat> she said, the Holy Spirit has told me to stop preaching about what I'm preaching and speak about this. Like, Whoa, what's going on here? <laughs> stop preaching. She said, love doesn't have an age. Now, I'm a couple of years older than my wife. And that was one of my things I asked the Lord. And she said, and look at me. I'm 42 years old, and my husband is 67. I was like, wow. It's all right, Lord. I understand. You're talking to me again. 
That's why I can relate to Brother Bruce when he said that he took it personal because you see, God knows what we need. And when God speaks, he speaks to the heart. Because the word of God is spirit and life. And it gives you life. Now you could accept it or reject it. It's up to you. Because God is a gentleman. He doesn't come and knock the door down and say, let me in. He wants you to invite him to come in. He said, here I am with that one that knocks on the door. If you invite me to come in, I will come in and die with you and you will die with me. Amen. So, I still didn't listen. Sometimes we're so hard. Amen. We're You know, you sit there and you ask yourself, how could, for instance, and I want you to picture yourself, how could you be showing somebody so much love and still be getting rejected? And you try to show them so much love to your child when they reject you because you was a drug addict, because they thinking that you want to steal something from them, or your mom because you used to steal in her house and she still rejects you. And you continue to try to show them love because you want to receive love. How do you think he feels when he's showing you so much love? Time and time again. Because I'm not perfect. I'm far from being perfect. But he's perfect. That's right. And we fail God every day. Rather, if you're a pastor, an evangelist, a missionary, a person that says that they do not sin, the Bible says that it makes him a liar. But see, with Christ in our lives, we're able to overcome those things. Because just like Brother Bruce said, great is he who lives inside of me. He was in the world. So, she was hard-headed. Not listening. I lost my cousin. In 2008, I started selling drugs again. One thing that my wife testified after I gave myself to the Lord, because I gave, I had my experience with the Lord in the county, the same county jail. Because sometimes it takes that so that God can give my undivided attention. Yes, God. Mm -hmm. So in 2008, my cousin <laughs> passes away. My daughter was born. Three months. I went, to, I went to the funeral. At that time, I wasn't talking to my mom. I wasn't talking to my sister. I didn't want them to see my daughter because of the anger that I still had inside me. I see my cousin. I went to my wife called me because the mother and the sister's here. I said, I'm not going to get there. She said, hey, please come. It's not that I went on my own. I got guided there. I got guided there by the Lord. I got there, and I see my mother, and I see my daughter sitting down with my daughter in her hands. She was crying, and I looked at her, and she looked at me. And she got up, and she embraced me. And I embraced her. And I started crying, she started crying, but then I see everybody looking at me behind. And when I looked, it was my mom's. My mom's a little short lady. So I'm looking, and I turn around, and I turn around, she's there. And you, I don't know if you could picture this, but if you ever looked at your child when they're crying, and they're looking up at you, and they're crying, and they just want you to pick them up. And I see my mom there crying. And all that hate was still inside of me. But she was crying. To embrace my moms. When I embraced my moms, I felt a load come off of me. Not knowing that God was already working. Because even though we don't know Christ when we're walking out in the streets, but God knows what He's doing. Because even though you never served Christ, even though you never knew the Lord, God is watching over you. 
Amen. Because the Bible says that he loved us first. He chose us. And I see my mom's crying. I embraced her. I went up to the coffin. I see my cousin in the coffin. I looked. And I heard the voice of the Lord say, that's how you can be without your salvation. Yeah. And I continue to be hard-headed. <coughs> My wife's mother is a missionary. She came up that same week. She came up to me and she said, I have a message from you, for you, from the Lord. I said, what? I put my hand in her face and I turned around and I walked away. And what I didn't understand then, like I said, I understand it now. She was crying. But see, what I didn't understand then, I understand it now. Because it wasn't her that was crying. It was Christ that was crying, that was inside of her. Trying to reach out to me. And she never was able to give me the message. Why? Because I got incarcerated. I got incarcerated. And I was facing 15 years to life. No plea bargain. I didn't know what to do. But the thing about it was that the bail money was there. But every time they went to go bail me out, for some reason I couldn't get out. Because that wasn't God's plan. Because God knew that if I would have got bailed out, I would have went back to the same things. Going back to the street life, hurting my family, hurting my kids, hurting my wife. And I was just in the county all alone. And so I said, you know what? This is it. You know why? Because something I didn't touch on, at the age of 11, how many people are here from Paris? I don't know if you guys are familiar with the old Preakness Hospital that used to be a detention center. Mm -hmm. Right? I was there too. I was 11 years old when God used a minister from the Black Panthers, a leader from the Black Panthers. And wherever he's at, may the Lord protect him and give him the strength that he's going to be in He came. His name was Black Joe. He came to give his testimony. He got shot with a machine gun. His body had holes all over. By his heart, by his liver, by his lungs, all over. But he was still alive. His testimony impacted my life. He said that when he fell down that he got shot, he said that he seen a bright light that told him, I'm going to use you for my glory. Amen. And see, Black Joe, Brother Joe, didn't know that he was planting a seed that was going to reach me at that time also. And the thing about that is that I sit here and I'm, I'm like, wow. The way that the Lord used people in our lives. And he's preaching, giving his testimony, and I'm sitting there. He's preaching, and all of a sudden he stops. He looks at me, and he keeps walking. And he said, young man, the Lord has something with you. He has a calling for your life. Still didn't listen. Ran through all the prisons, all the jails, did six years. But in 2008 was when I had my experience with the Lord. And I'm sitting in, in St. County. That's a bad county to be. Real bad. But God glorified himself. 
Because there's where I had my experience with the Lord. I gave myself up to the Lord. I accepted Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. It was like when you guys was young and your dad or your mom's be on the porch and your friend lived around the corner. They should be like, don't go around the corner, stay in the porch. Don't go around the corner. But guess what? When mom and dad went in the house, we ran around the corner where our friend was at. Knowing that they told us not to go. But as soon as dad comes out on the porch, I'm going to use you, Drew, with all respect. And he says, Drew! Drew recognized his father was calling him. That's what happened to me in 2008. I heard the calling of my father. And I said, I got to go home. So I'm sitting in the county, and I'm reading the word. And trust me, like brother Bruce said, the devil do exist. Because I also believed in that. In witchcraft. But while I was in there, I started hearing a voice that would give me a verse in the chapter from the Bible. I called my wife. And I told her, I said, hey, I don't know what's going on, but I hear a voice telling me to go to Mark. What is Mark? What is verse 7? What is that? And my wife, being raised in the gospel, she said, write whatever is telling you to write, because that is a verse from the Bible. See, so the Lord was already teaching me. The Holy Spirit of God was already teaching me. Amen. And I continued to write. I was writing so many things that I, I didn't understand. But then again, that was moving me. For you guys that been in the Passaic County Judge, you know they just don't grab you and move you from tear to tear, from door to door. They don't do that. But they was doing it with me. I didn't know why. I didn't understand why. But God knew why. Because everywhere that they would put me, I would speak about the word. To those that was in there. I was sitting there one day and I was saying, Lord, how is it that they bring um, books? They bring dominoes. They bring cards. They bring chests. They bring checkers. But they don't bring the Bible. You know why? Because the devil trying to keep you trapped. He wants to keep your mind in captivity. So that you don't know about the Lord. But see, the Bible says, know the truth and the truth will set you free. So I'm sitting there, and they call me. They go, Negron, go down to the chapel. I'm like, what I do now? <laughs> you know, because I was always used to say what I do or what's going on. And so when I go down there, the pastor was there. He goes, your name is Negron? Frank Negron? I said, yes. He said, those are for you. When I turned around, my brothers and friends, they were Bibles. <laughs> Bibles. Because see, while I was upstairs asking the Lord, why was this going on? And God knew my desire. God said, you know what? I'm going to give you what you need so that you can teach these people my word. So they, they can also know who I am. Because see, there's a lot of people that don't go to the prison. They scared of going to the jail. And when you're in jail, there's people that don't want to speak about the word. People that know about God. And they're afraid because they're worried about peer pressure. And I grabbed the Bibles and I took them upstairs. I was going from door to door, taking the word, not knowing that I was preaching. <coughs> My wife come to see me one day. There's women downstairs, the guys that was locked up with us, their wives. And they asked my wife, they said, are you the pastor's wife? She said, Pastor? Pastor <laughs> ain't no pastor. <laughs> she didn't know what the Lord was doing. Praise God. Oh, what did God do a lot of things in there? And I give him all the glory and all the honor. Amen. Because I am grateful. And I thank God for taking me out of that life. 
And while I was in the county, I went right. It was me. I would go with fellowship. I sit with people. I started with one person, then I went to two, then I went to three. Now I have three brothers in fellowship with me. One, one was uh, Salvadorian, another one was uh, Mexican, and there was, uh, uh, I think he was Peru. I didn't even know how to speak Spanish. But guess what? They knew what I was saying. <laughs> because you know why? Because the Bible says that there was two or three gathered in my name. I will be there. And the Lord is here. Yes. And the same way that he's here, he was over there. And I just kept doing what God was telling me to do. I'm not knowing what I was doing. I remember my Mother's Day of 2008. Brother Daniel came up to me. He said, Brother, why don't we have a service and give them food? Now, everybody in that bed in Pacific County was the main court. <coughs> so when he told me that, I said, you know what? I know that this is coming from the Lord. I said, you know what? That's a good idea. Because, see, I was in, I believe it was 3G3 or the one next door. But I know that they're real big. See, because I've never been in Pacific County. Never in my life until in 2008. So when they put me in there, I was like, I didn't know what was what. Now, when he told me that, I said, that's a good idea. <clears throat> now, we all know the Raven and Noodle Soup, six-pack. 3G3 three and the other one that's next door, 50, 65 men. Not boys, men. And when you got some big brothers in there, they eat more than one pack. <laughs> I know, I, I was eating more than one pack. Let's look how the Lord does. I'm sitting there, and I said, you know what, let's do this. So I went around. Now, the door that I was in, there was gang members from different gangs. And I went around and I said, listen, I'm going to bring the word, but I'm also going to have some food. Now, when a brother here, a fool that's in jail that doesn't have food, and you tell him food, is he going to come or not going to come? He's going to come, right? <laughs> so it was something that the Holy Spirit was giving me to be like, you know what? Tell him that you're going to give him food. Don't come. <laughs> that was good. So, I went around that told There were 65 people in my dorm. Or in cell, whatever you want to call it. So that day, I got the, the food ready. Before the food was ready, though, I brought the message. There were 65 people in that dorm. 35 was in the circle. And you know that they have the TVs up on top. As I was bringing the message, all of a sudden you see he was a crip. He went up on top of the steps, and he, he was one of the leaders there. He went and turned off all the TVs and started listening to the message. And I see him turn it on. I look at him. people here. But God knows what he's doing. And I'm, and I'm speaking the word. Now, there was 35 in the circle that I was already bringing the word to. And I was in the middle. Now, the 35 was not the only one that was listening to the word. Because, see, the word says that faith comes from what? Yeah. Hearing. Hearing the word of God. Now, in that circle was 35, and the 30 was outside. Now, they're listening from the outside in. And some strange thing happened. That the COs got their chairs and started listening to the message too. I was like, whoa. Got COs sitting down listening to the message. I know that God is working. <laughs> because I can't, I can't do that. I can't have bloods, cricks. Latin kings, Trinitarios, holding hands, crying. I can't do that. But God can. Right. And that's what happened. That was there, holding hands. How could you get two gangs or three gangs that fight against each other, they try to kill each other, and got so much hate against each other, 
be holding hands, crying. <laughs> Only the Lord can do that. Amen. And I continue to preach, and I'm seeing these brothers crying. I'm like, I was just giving God the glory. And I was seeing this. I'm like, wow. And I'm seeing the guys outside, outside the circle crying. And the officers like they was like, into the message. Mm -hmm. Because see, I went up to them and I told them, I said, listen, it's Mother's Day. We're all here. We're all, we don't have our mothers with us now. But I'm going to bring the message. <clears throat> and I was able to bring the message on glory to God. And I'm sitting there and I'm praying. So I got done with the message. Now something else happened. You know that the bread, the loaf of bread, brings 30 slices in the count. We got the hundred together, me and the three brothers that was fellowshipping with me all the time. I grabbed their hands. I said, you know what? Let's pray over this food. I prayed over the food. I said, Lord, the same way that you fed those 5,000 people with the two fish and a five loaf of bread, I know that you could do it here. I'm not telling you that the food went like I'm not telling you that because I'm in the presence of God right now but the food did look bigger than what it, it was more than what it was but now here where everything kicks in there's 65 people in the door the brother that's sitting with me giving me the hook to put the noodles on the bread and I'm going around taking the bread to everybody He's looking at me and saying, where's all this bread coming from when there's only 30 slices and we fed 65 people? Exactly. Only the Lord could do that. And guess what? There was still some left over for me in the three brothers. Only God could do that. So, the Lord glorified himself in my life. I know what it is to be out in the streets. I know what it is to know that I don't have nowhere to go sleep at the age of 11. I know what it is to be rejected. I know what it is to be in and out of jail. I know what it is to be in gangs. I know what it is to sell drugs. Use drugs. Because see, the world looks at it like this. They're always going to be the same. There's no change in them. They're never going to change. But when you come to Christ, there's a big change. Because the Bible teaches me. In Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ because he's the one who strengthens me. It's not with my strength, but it's with the Holy Spirit of the Lord that guides me through and it helps me through. And I continue be serving God in jail. And God was moving in a way that I couldn't understand in my brothers and friends. And I remember that I, they made me a trust. <coughs> made me a trust. There was this one dude that when I first went in there, he was in the same dorm. But you know after a while they separate you. They put you in different dorms. So after they made me a trustee, I was the one that was going around picking up the garbage. So you were able to go around every cell and pick up the garbage and see everybody. And if you got something to bring them, you bring it to them. Or somebody got listen to you, you down to my brother or well. I remember walking and seeing this young man at the gate as I'm coming. And when I seen him, he said, Brother Frank, I'm always here waiting for a good word from you. When I looked at him, I was like, he said, what's the good word for the day? Mm. And I started speaking to him. Mm. But as I left, I started walking away and I started crying. You know why I started crying? I said, Lord, oh, Lord, you die. These people in here don't know me as a drug dealer no more or a drug user. They know me as a that's what God does. Because when you come to Christ, the Bible says you are a new creation. All things have passed away. Not something. It says all things. All things pass away. Here it is. 
all things are new. People talk about me saying I couldn't do nothing. I didn't want you to say it's great. I don't have no PhD. I don't have a doctor's degree. But I have Christ. I have the Holy Spirit. It doesn't matter if you didn't go to school. It doesn't matter if you didn't get graduate. Because see this book right here? This the word of God. It teaches you how to be a man. It teaches you how to be a father. It teaches you how to be a husband. It teaches you how to be a brother. How to love. How to forgive. How to help. Because this is what the Lord has left us. Holy Bible. He only left basic instructions before leaving earth. Because see, we're not from this world. That's what the Bible teaches me. I'm not from this world. Because this world is so full of sin and hatred. You see people, they're living without hope. But see, we are the light that need to go out there and take the word. Because the Bible says it's better to give than to receive. So if you receive the word, just don't keep it. Take it out and share it. Amen. Amen. And with all that, I was just thinking that because I've seen a whole different picture. I was able to see into the spiritual world. You know why? Because demons did manifest themselves in there. And they came and spoke. And I had a rebuke in the name of Jesus. Because demons do exist. Want me to tell you why I, tell, I know that? Because they tried to have me take my life three times. Yes. I tried to take my life three times too. Twice OD. The second time. I took what I wanted to take to OD, and I felt myself going out of this world. But you know what? I, I, I came from the bottom of my heart, from my soul, and I screamed out to the Lord. And I said, Lord, I don't want to live like this no more. I don't want to be like this no more. And I snapped out. Twice. And the third time was with a gun. Put the gun in my mouth. I went to go pull the trigger. And something came over me that didn't allow me to pull it. Because see, that's what the devil puts in your mind. The Bible says, the word of God says that he's the father of all lies. There's no truth in him. And we have to give God thanks. Every day. Thank Just it was Thanksgiving. Everybody enjoy that trick, get everything. The food is good. But see, Thanksgiving is just not November 28th. Thanksgiving is every day that you get up. Giving God thanks for allowing you to get up another day. Because the devil's going to try to destroy you. When he sees that that seed is being planted, he's going to try to rip it out so that it doesn't grow. He's going to tell you lies. He's going to laugh at you. He's going to put a lot of things in your mind. You're going to be like, why am I going through this? It's because he wants to destroy you. That's what he came to do. It's to destroy, kill, and steal. But God came to give life and life abundantly. It gets hard. Like Brother Bruce said. It gets hard. But it's not impossible because all things are possible. Amen. 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 In this world, the word of God is being completed. <clears throat> Look at the tsunami. Look at the hurricanes. All that stuff that's going on right now. Look at what's
was happening in Syria. All that stuff. Because Christ is coming. Christ is coming. But see, the Bible says that God's patience is for man to repent. We need to change our ways. How do we do that? Accepting Christ as our Lord and Savior. Because you can't do it on your own. 2 Corinthians 3.17 says, Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Because see, the enemy tried to keep you in bondage, chained up, so that he makes it seem like God doesn't exist. But see, I know God exists, because he came to my life. I didn't go to him. And the Bible never showed that man went to God. God always went to the man. Because when Adam and Eve sinned and was disobedient to God, Adam didn't go to God. The Lord came to him. And what happened? You don't know. Okay. But you're about to know. The Lord asked him where he was at. God knew where he was at. Or do you think that God doesn't know everything? God sees everything. And every little secret place that you hide, and that, every closet that you try to hide from the Lord, He sees everything. Everything that we do. But see, we have come to try to blame everybody else. To say that Adam did with Eve. When God said, what did you do? Adam knew that he wasn't supposed to eat off the tree of life. Of good and evil, what he said? He tried to blame God. He said, The woman that you gave me. Now, come on, somebody. The woman that he, you gave me. That she, he goes to the woman, he said, Woman, what you have done? She said, The serpent deceived. You see, we always try to blame everybody else for our faults. But the Bible says, that if you confess your sins to Christ, he is faithful and just to forgive you and to clean you of all unrighteousness. All we have to do is confess you. And you know, I'm not telling you to go to nobody and say, listen, I did this, I did that, because you want, that's what some people try to do. They want you to go to man, okay? I mean, I was raised a Catholic. I was a father of son, and I was a Muslim. And none of that stuff brought me joy or happiness. But when I accepted Christ in my Lord, as my Lord and Savior, trust me, I was at peace. Amen. Because God is the God of peace, of happiness. God is the God that restores. He restores your family. Whatever you're going through, God restores it. All you have to do is trust in the Lord and put all your trust in Him. There's nothing out there. I've done it all. And to see a brother like Bruce, it just keeps me going. Because we're supposed to help one another. We're not supposed to keep quiet on what God did with us. We're supposed to go take. That's why it's called the good news. And when it says, put on the armor of God, it says the shoes of readiness, ready to run. The belt of truth. The helmet of salvation. The breastplate. The shield, which is your faith. And the sword. Which is the word of God that penetrates. So and, and just like Brother Bruce was saying, something that I wanted to read, where it says in Isaiah 55, verse 11, it says, So shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. It shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish what I please, and it shall prosper in the thing for which I sent it. 
See, God already had prophesied the word over Brother Bruce to be able to come here and give his testimony. For those that, of you that know him or don't know him, God prophesied over my life because we have to speak it into existence. God said, let there be light. So I have to proclaim victory over my life, over my family, over my brothers in Christ. And we have to learn how to let the Lord guide us. Now, I prepared something here. One thing that I learned from my pastor, from the Word of God, everything is subject to change according to the Holy Spirit. See, because my thoughts are not God's thoughts. God knows what we need. Some of you probably went through what I went through. Or even worse. But see, God is the only one that knows. I don't know you, but God knows you. He knows, he sees you when you're crying by yourself in your room. Say, Lord, why am I going through this? Why nobody loves me? Why am I rejected? Why I don't have a place to stay? Why I don't have my family? But you have the Lord. The Bible says that even though your mother and your father rejects you, the Lord will never reject you. No. And I have prepared, like I said, something here. I'm just going to go through it. Christ Jesus wants you to know that all this he did for you. Not just for me, but for you too. Because see, we all sinners. None of us in here are perfect, and I include myself. Just because I'm sitting up here or standing up here with a jacket and a tie, that doesn't make me no different from you. Because in, in God's eyes, we're all the same. Amen. We're all the same. Rather, the skin color is different. It doesn't matter. Because inside, inside, we're all the same. In the inside, there's no color. <laughs> now, I'm going to share this with you. It says, Christ Jesus wanted you to know that all this he did for you. He came because of your sin. Because the word of God says in 1 Timothy 1.15, this is a faithful saying and worthy of all exception, <coughs> that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Because the word of God says in Romans 3.10, as it is written, there is none, ri none righteous, no, not one. Because Romans 3.23 says, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. He also wants you to know that he died for you, to pay for your sin. Because the word of God says in Romans 5, 8 and 9, but God commands his love towards us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from, wrath, from the wrath through him. And also in Isaiah 53, 5, the word of God says, but he was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes we are healed. And in Colossians it says, 1.14 says, In whom we have redemption through his blood. Because see, only the blood of Christ cleans us. No other blood. Nothing else cleans us and purifies us. He wanted you to know that he also rose from the dead to keep you saved eternally. Because the word of God says in 1 John 5.11, and this is the testimony that God has given us, eternal life. And this life is in his son. And in Hebrews 7.25 says, therefore he is also able to save the uttermost, those who come to God through him, since he always lives to make interse inter intercession for them. And because of this, Jesus said in John 10, 27, 28, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me, and I give them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall anyone snatch them out of my hand. My Father, who has given them to me, is greater than all, and no one is able to snatch them out of my Father's hand. The Lord wants you to know you must repent admitting you are guilty and you cannot do anything to save or help save yourself. 
and that you need Jesus Christ. Luke 13, 3 says, I tell you now, but unless you repent, you will all likewise perish. In Isaiah 55, 79, the word of God says, let the wicked forsake his way, and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Let him return to the Lord, and he will have mercy on him. And to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are my ways your ways my ways, says the Lord. So we are not saved by what we do. Because the word of God says in Titus 3, 5, not by works of righteousness, which, which we have done, but according to his mercy. He saved us through the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Spirit. And in Rome 4, 5, says, but to him who does not work, but believes on him who justifies the ungodly. His faith is accounted for righteousness. So my friends and those that still don't know if they should come to Christ or not. Or know the Lord, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ wants you also to know this. You must trust him. Put your complete faith in Jesus Christ to save you. Because the word of God says in John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whoever believed in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Yeah. So if you choose to trust Jesus as your Savior, then all you have to do is exactly what the Word of God says in Rome 10, 9, and 10. That if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Yeah. But with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made yeah, unto salvation. Not. And in John 3, 18, says, He who believes in him is not condemned, but he who does not believe is condemned already. Because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And the word says in Romans 10, 13. For whoever, whoever calls on the name of the Lord Amen. shall be saved. Amen. Second Corinthians 5 17 says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have passed, all things are new. Behold, because of your commitment, you did what the Bible told you to do. Romans 10 13. For whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Because of God's witness, 1 John 5 11 13 says, And this is the testimony that God has given us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. He who has the Son has life. He who does not have the Son of God do not have it. These things I have written to you who believe in the name of the Son of God that you may know that you have eternal life and that you may continue to believe in the name of the Son of God because of God's promise. John 5, 24 says, Most assuredly I say to you, he who hears my word and believes in him who sent me has everlasting life and shall not come in judgment but has passed from death, death to life. Second, as evidence of giving Jesus control of your life, he wants you to publicly confess him and follow him in baptism and church membership. The Bible says those who had received his word were baptized and the Lord was adding to their numbers day by day. Those who were being saved. <coughs> Jesus wants you to grow in a strong, faithful disciple. The Bible says, like newborn babes, long for the pure milk of the word that by it you may grow into, in respect to salvation. 1 Peter 2, 2 and 3. There are four absolute things growth. The word absolute means free from imperfection. Perfect. Free from <coughs> pure. Food. Spiritual food is God's word, the Bible. You should read it, study it, memorize it, practice it, and hear it taught and preached. Breathing. Spiritual breathing is praying. Spend time every day talking to God about everything you do, about your needs and problems, about families and friends, and tell him how much you love him and how grateful you are. Exercise. Spiritual exercise means helping others, witnessing, giving time and energy to God's work, and being a living testimony to the world you live in. Rest. Spiritual rest means worship, both public and private worship. Rest means being still and waiting on God. It means physical and spiritual renewal. Jesus, fourth, Jesus wants you to experience victory over sin in your daily lives. Amen. The Bible says, for whatever is born of God overcomes the world, and this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. 1 John 5 and 4. The Christian life is difficult. 
But victory is assured because greater is he who is in you than he who is in the world. 1 John 4 and 4. Even with victory assured, there will be acts of disobedience and failure because of your human nature. Because of our human nature. However, God has provided a means by which you can be cleansed of daily sin. His word says that if we confess our sin, he is faithful and righteous to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. 1 John 1, 1 9. So when you sin, don't try to deny it or excuse it by the name of sin to God and claim his promise of forgiveness. But don't just confess your sin. You have to forsake them because in Proverbs 28, 13, the word of God says, He who covers his sin will not prosper, but whoever confesses and forsakes them will have mercy. Now I'm going to share this with you guys and I'm going to end it with this. And all this... I learned through the world. I didn't go to college or nothing like that. Now this is what I want you guys to know. For all the lies that the devil tells you, the Lord always answers with the truth. Amen. When the devil tells you that you are down, the Lord tells you that he will refresh you. Matthew 11, 28 and 30. When the devil tells you that it's impossible, the Lord tells you all things are possible. Luke 18, 27. When the devil tells you no one loves you, the Lord tells you, with the love to time indefinite, I have loved you. Jeremiah 31, 31. <clears throat> when the devil tells you that you are weak, the Lord tells you, I will make you strong. 1 Peter 5, 7. Amen. When the devil tells you that you feel short, you fell short of doing what is right, the Lord tells you to get up. Proverbs 24, 16. When the devil tells you that you can't go on, the Lord tells you, I will give you power beyond what is normal. 2 Corinthians 4, 7. When the devil tells you that you can't figure out what to do, the Lord tells you, I will direct your path. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. When the devil tells you that you can't do it, the Lord tells you that you can do all things. Philippians 4, 13. When the devil tells you to give up, the Lord tells you, don't fight the good fight of faith. 1 Timothy 6, 11. When the devil tells you it's not worth it, the Lord tells you to know it will be worth it, Romans 8, 28. When the devil tells you that you are unworthy, the Lord tells you you are worthy, 2 Thessalonians 1, 5. When the devil tells you that you sin because he's an accuser, he's always trying to come to accuse you, the Lord tells you, to, the Lord wants you to know I am ready to forgive Psalms 86 5. When the devil tells you that you can't forgive yourself, the Lord tells you, I forgive you in a large way. Isaiah 55 7, Rome 8 and 1. When the devil tells you that your heart condemns you, the Lord tells you, I am greater than your heart. 1 John 3 19. When the devil tells you that you can't manage, the Lord tells you, I will supply all your needs. Philippians 4 19. When the devil tells you that you don't have enough faith, the Lord tells you, I give everyone a measure of faith. Romans 12, 3, Matthew 7 and 7. When the devil makes you feel afraid, the Lord tells you, I have not given you a, a spirit of fear. Be strong. 2 Timothy 1, 7, Isaiah 35, 4. When the devil makes you feel worried and frustrated, the Lord tells you, cast all your cares on me. 1 Peter 5, 7. When the devil tells you that you are not smart enough, the Lord tells you, I will give you wisdom generously. 1 Corinthians 1 30 and 1 5. When the devil tells you that you have been rejected, the Lord tells you that you are my servant and I have not rejected you. Praise Isaiah 9 9. When the, when the devil tells you that you have been abandoned, the Lord tells you, I will never leave you or forsake you. Amen. Amen. The Lord tells you, do not be afraid, for I am with you. Isaiah 41 10. When the devil tells you that you are helpless, the Lord tells you, I will fortify you. I will really help you. Isaiah 41, 11. When the devil tells you to be angry with someone, the Lord tells you, don't, don't let anger alone. Leave anger alone and leave rage. Psalms 37, 8. When the devil tells you that you cry a lot, the Lord tells you that your tears are precious and are kept in my skin bottle. 
Psalm 56, 8. When the devil tells you that you are not good at preaching, oh, santo Dios, hallelujah. Mi alma te adora. The Lord wants you to know, I will teach you. Luke 12, 11 and 12. When the devil tells you no one seems to care, the Lord tells you, I care for you. 1 Peter 5 and 7. When the devil tells you that you're lost, the Lord tells you, I found you. Luke 15, 24. When the devil makes you feel hurt, the Lord tells you, let it go. A classic 7 and 9. When the devil makes you feel depressed, the Lord tells you, I am right there with you. Psalms 34, 18. When the devil makes you feel confused, the Lord tells you, lean on me. And I will make things straight. Proverbs 3, 6. When the devil tells you that you are worn out, the Lord tells you, hope in me and you will regain power. Isaiah 40, 13. When the devil tells you that you don't know what to do, the Lord tells you, you listen to me and I will give you wisdom. Proverbs 2, 1 and 5. When the devil tells you that you can't wait, so you can't wait, so do, I'm sorry. When the devil tells you that you can't wait, the Lord tells you to hang on a little longer. Mm -hmm. Psalms 37, 10. Thank you, hallelujah. Thank God. The Lord has done a lot of things. And I'm very grateful that the Lord has allowed this to happen. And we all know we all know that Christ is coming. How many want to go with the Lord when he comes, when that trumpet is sounding? The decision is yours. And just to let, let you know, it's like when you're going, when you're traveling. I have something here. Pastor, with this, I'm going to finish. Heaven, a guide for travelers. A combination, arrangement for first class, a combination has been made in advance. In my father's house are many mansions. I go to prepare a place for you. John 14, 2. Passports. Persons seeking entry will not be permitted past the gates without having proper credentials and having their name registered with the ruling authority. Amen. There shall be, there shall by no means enter in anything that defiles or causes an abomination or a lie, but only those who are written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Revelation 12, 27. Departure time. The exact date of departure has not been announced. Travelers, I advise to be prepared to leave at a short notice. It is not for you to know the time or the season which the Father has put in his own authority. Acts 1 7. Tickets. Your ticket is a written pledge that guarantees your journey. It shall be claimed and its promise kept firmly in hand. He who hears my word and believes in him who sent me has everlasting life and shall not come into judgment but has passed from death into life. Customs. Only the de declaration is required while going through customs. That if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Romans 10 9. Immigration. All passengers are classified as immigrants since they are taking up permanent residence in a new country. In a new country, the quota is unlimited. But now they des desire better. That is a heavenly country. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he has prepared a city for them. Hebrews 11 16. Luggage. No luggage whatsoever can be taken. For we brought nothing into the world, and it's certain we can't carry nothing out. First Timothy 6 7. Air passenger. Traveling going directly by air, I advise to watch daily for indication of imminent departure. Then when when who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And thus we shall always be with the Lord. Amen. Vaccination. Injections are not needed as disease are unknown at this destination. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There shall be no more death, no sorrow, no crying. There shall be no more pain, for the former things have passed away. Revelation 21 4. Currency. Supplies of currency may be forward ahead to await the passengers' arrival. Deposits should be as large as possible. But lay up for yourself treasures in heaven, whether neither moth nor rust destroy, and whether thieves do not break in and steal. Matthew 6 20. Clothing. A complete and appropriate new wardrobe is provided for each traveler. He has clothed me with the garment of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness. Isaiah 61 10. Time change. Resetting of watches will not be necessary to adjust to any day or night schedule. The city has no need of the sun, neither of the moon, to shine in it. For the glory of God that illuminated. The land is the land is its light. There shall be no night there. Revelation 21 23. Reservation. 
Booking is now open. Apply at once. Now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. 2 Corinthians 6 2. Sure, the highlights of the journey is the welcome reception and correction which awaits each new arrival. There is laid up for me a crown of righteousness which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day. And not to me only, but all, unto all the orphans that love his appearance. 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy. Bless. Bless. That, I'll leave it here. Now, <coughs> I'm going to leave that with that. That's my message there. Like I said, everything has changed according to the Holy Spirit. And I'm one person that I've learned and obeyed to be guided and led by the Holy Spirit. Amen. People might don't believe, but I did my job. Because my hands are clean from your blood. It's up to you to accept it. When the day of judgment comes, you can't sit on that judgment seat and say, Lord, when nobody spoke to me about the word, guess what? I came here. Amen. Brother Amen. Bruce came here. Amen. The pastor. And all those that are you affiliated here that has spoken to you about the word has spoken to you. Just because you don't see the Lord come off his throne and come and sit next to you and tell you, listen, I love you. No. Jesus loves you. I'm here to tell you that. If there's anybody here that haven't accepted Christ as their Lord and Savior, and you would love to come up and accept the Lord, now is the time. It's up to you. Anybody want to pray? I'm going to pray if you want to. Don't be afraid. Don't be ashamed. <laughs> tell me that Jesus is not rich because he is real. And I give him all the glory. 